Studio by France Van Kert's Mark Perelman and our guest, Fana Mustafa Bakir, who's the head of diplomacy for the Iraqi Kurds. Hello, thank you very much for being with us, sir. Uh, we asked that question just there. Uh, when can we expect the battle for Mosul to begin? Well, thank you for having me. Preparations are underway in order to prepare ourselves for the last chapter in the fight against ISIS. It will be a matter of days in order to have this important fight to liberate Mosul, but it's important for coordination to be there among the forces that will be taking part in this, and also for consideration to be given for political arrangements for the day after, because this would be a tough fight. It will not be an easy fight, but it's doable. The military part is much easier than the political part for us. For us, we believe that we have to address the root causes that led to the emergence of ISIS in Iraq. If we cannot address the causes of the problem, we may end up having another cycle of violence. Therefore, Baghdad has to ensure that the Sunni community feel that they are part and parcel of this process, that they have a future, and for those who have suffered under ISIS, they can expect a better life post-ISIS. For us, we believe that militarily we have to coordinate, politically there has to be co cooperation, and also humanitarian-wise, we have to be ready, because the moment these operations start, we are expecting an influx of displaced people to come, and mostly to Kurdistan region. Uh, I want to go back to the timetable. You said within days, Mosul will be assaulted by uh, this uh, coalition. It means that in the current of October, we'll see the attack happen. Well, this is the expectation. There have been a number of uh, tripartite and joint meetings between Peshmerga forces, Iraqi army, and the coalition. And there has been an agreement on the military plan in order to do it. We have to be mindful of the fact that this would be important because uh, in Mosul, the caliphate was declared. So the, the liberating Mosul from ISIS would be the heaviest blow to ISIS in Iraq, and that would be the beginning of their end, militarily or physical existence. But we have to be mindful also of the fact that we have to address other issues to fight the ideology, to ensure that there would be no opportunity for ISIS or the likes of ISIS to emerge again. There's also another concern that was raised, especially by uh, Turkey in recent days, the participation of the uh, Shia uh, militias. They're obviously a very powerful military force. In Iraq, there have been uh, instances where uh, there have been problems with their role. Do you think, as Turkey has said, that they should not participate in the Battle of Mosul because this could uh, really ratchet up sectarian tensions in Iraq? I believe Baghdad has to ensure that the right forces will participate in the liberation of Mosul. As far as we are concerned, we have made it clear that the Peshmerga forces are ready to participate in this uh, battle. Uh, we have no ambitions or no aspirations to go beyond our areas. We will not enter Mosul. We have made it clear that we have allowed access to Iraqi troops to uh, assemble and uh, have prepared staging areas in order to be part of this operation. But it's important for the concerns of the people of Mosul to be taken into consideration. We have seen what happened in Tikrit. We have seen what happened in Fallujah. We do not want to see a repetition of something that would lead to further problems. That's why we, we believe the participation of the Iraqi army is important. The counterterrorism CTS would be important together with the, but not, the coalition. But not the Shia militia. Unless there is an agreement between the Sunni and the Sunni community and Baghdad on their participation. But otherwise, it would lead to problems. A very quick Quickly, the humanitarian concern, how many refugees or displaced people are you expecting once the assault, within days, as you just said, starts? We're expecting more than half a million uh, displaced people to come to its Kurdistan region, and that would be a huge responsibility, because we already have 1.8 million displaced people and refugees from Syria in Kurdistan region, and the cost on us has been 1.4 billion a year. So therefore, we need international community, we need the United Nations to help us to deal with, because we do not have time. Although some pledges were made, some promises were made, we need to be ready the time these operations will start. Okay, thank you very much for, um, for being with us. Thank you very much for having spoken to